Hi there, my name is Matti Sulanto. In this video, I'm gonna show you two simple setups that you can build at home and to create some awesome pictures. And I'm also going to show you how to use full manual flash. Right now, here in the north corner of the northern hemisphere, it's almost the darkest time of the year. And some days are just so gloomy and dark that you don't want to go out at all. So what to do if your shutter finger is itchy and you'd like to create something to keep your photography skills up? So, if you are in the similar kind of situation, regardless of your location, these next setups and tips are definitely for you. So stick around and see what I have. I'm in my kitchen and there's a reason for it. Uh, but before we go into that, let's check out what kind of equipment we need today. We're gonna need a camera, of course, but any kind of camera will do as long as it has a manual exposure mode and a hot shoe, and any kind of kit zoom or kit lens will do. I'm going to be using my Lumix G90 with the Lumix uh, 12 to 60 mm kit lens, but I might as well use the Lumix S1R with the kit lens or any camera with manual exposure and a hot shoe. And then we're going to need a flash. I'm using a old, old uh, Yongnuo 560 Mark III with the uh, uh, YN560TX remote controller. You can get these or similar flashes today for a very, very low price. And then in the first setup, we're going to need a tripod. But everything else is pretty much normal household uh, stuff that everyone probably has in their home already. So let's get started. So here's my first setup. I already have my camera on a tripod. I have my flash trigger on the hot shoe. But before I go any further, let me show you what kind of an image we are after here. When we are done, we should have an image that looks something like this. In this measuring cup, I have some rolled oats and flour. So I have two kinds of uh, particles that I'm going to sprinkle on this kitchen top. And I'm going to use one of these jars that I have for my muesli and pasta to support my flask like this. And I'm going to bounce the flask off these white tiles back here. If you happen to have a similar type of kitchen, uh, and but the tiles are not white just uh, tape a piece of white paper there and uh, that should work just as fine the backlight situation that i'm creating here uh, together with the slightly blurred background is going to give me some nice three-dimensional look and my camera settings are as follows my focal length is uh, at 40 millimeters if you're using a full frame camera, use something like 70, 80 millimeters. I'm at f8. If you're using a full frame camera, go to f11 or even f16 to get a bit more depth of field. And my shutter speed is 1 250th of a second, which is the highest sync speed on the G9. Check your camera's uh, highest or fastest sync speed in the manual because that's what you want to use here. And of course, I'm in full manual mode and at base ISO 200. And next, I'm going to get my focus right. I'm going to put my hand here on the kitchen top and uh, press the focus button on my camera like so. And then I'm also going to use my hand to get my exposure right. And since we are using a flash here, we are not going to touch the camera settings at all. They stay as they are. And we are adjusting the output of this flash to get the exposure right. And we need to make a couple of test pictures first. I'm gonna put my hand here where my focus point is. And I'm gonna make a test shot and see how the exposure looks. And I'm going to start at 1 16th of the full power of the flash and I'm going to make a test picture like so. 
and let's see what came out. It's almost there, but it's a little bit too dark as we can see from the histogram. So I'm gonna increase the flash power by one stop to um, one eighth of the full power and let's make another test picture like so and see how that is. Okay, that's pretty much perfect there. So I was only adjusting the output of this flash and that's what you're gonna do. If your test picture is way too dark, you increase the power of the flash. But if your first test picture is way too bright, you lower the power of the flash. And you keep doing that until you get your exposure right. And now it's time to make the shot. I'm just gonna sprinkle some of this, uh, this mixture on the kitchen top and at the same time press the shutter and try to keep everything synchronized so I can get some kind of a picture here. Let's see what comes out. This can take more than one try, so gotta be patient. I'm just gonna scoop this back to the measuring cup and uh, make another try. All right, let's see. Okay, it looks pretty good already, but I'm gonna make one more or two more sets because I realized the uh, lighting was a bit uneven, so I turned the, my flash a little bit to, towards the middle of the, of the background area here to get more even light. And at this point, I'd like to say also that if you have uh, some sort of very shiny, like uh, marble or one of those sort of shiny stone kitchen tops, you may want to put a cutting board or something on top of that. Otherwise, you may get some really nasty reflections in the background. So that's it. I think I'm done here. This is good enough for me and good enough to demonstrate uh, what we are after here. But if you are doing this at your home, please feel free to do this over and over again as many times you want until you get the shot you want. But now it's time to move on to the next uh, setup and in this one we're gonna take a shower. So I'm here in the shower, but don't worry, I'm not gonna take my clothes off. I have this blue bucket or bowl or whatever you call this. I'm gonna put some water in here and then I'm gonna use the shower to create some water uh, motion in the water and I'm gonna photograph that using a flash. Okay, now there's some water in the bowl and it's time to make a test picture to determine what kind of an exposure we need. I'm using the same camera, same flash trigger and the same flash. But I have a little bit different settings. My focal length or zoom setting is 25 millimeters. My f-stop is f5.6 and my shutter speed is the same as uh, in the previous setup, 1 250th of a second, then I'm at base ISO 200. And my flash power is at the quarter of the power because I'm gonna place my flash like this here behind the bowl so the light is coming through the plastic and the blue plastic is gonna suck quite a bit of light so I'm gonna start at the quarter of uh, a power and since we are in uh, a wet uh, like a space if you're doing this at home make sure you're not getting your flash or camera wet because they are not gonna like it but let's make a test picture so the flash is now at quarter of the maximum power and uh, let's take uh, let's have a look how it looks it's way too dark. I'm gonna increase the power. I think I'm gonna use the full power of the flash. Okay, time to make the shot. Let's see what comes out. Okay, not too bad, but not quite right yet. So let's give it another try. I'm gonna empty the bucket and we're gonna make another set of pictures. The blue bucket definitely helps here because we like to think that 
the water is blue, even though in most cases it's not. But these pictures have some nice details in them, and all in all, fun experiment. And the whole purpose of this is just to show that with a little bit of imagination and a little bit of experimenting, you can create some fun and uh, interesting pictures and entertain yourself um, at home. Just in case, for example, the weather outside is not that inspiring. Like it tends to be, uh, at least here in Helsinki, Finland, around this time of the year. I hope you enjoyed this little experimenting. And before you go, please check out these couple of videos that I chose for you guys. And uh, thank you so much for watching again. And I'll see you in the next one.